So it's like there. Yep. Hey. All right, we're live. Go a little higher. Even more. There we go. All right. Sorry, guys. We are, uh, wow. Literally one minute ago, we had, uh, my phone died at 12 o'clock today, noon. So uh, I spent an hour and a half at the phone store getting a new phone. And then all of a sudden, um, now I couldn't sign into Instagram and having email problems, everything. So now I just literally one minute ago was able to get it going. So we're a little messed up here. We are going to, let me get this angle better. So maybe, yeah, if you can see, uh, you want to come in? Chris is here. Hey, everybody. I see, yeah, we got people from Michigan. Oh, it's hard to read it like that, but uh, thanks for joining us. Treats, what's up? Um, yeah, we're live, and I thought today, Chris and I, as Chris, we are going to do a, what we call a first impressions, right? Yeah, I'll have you taste some dry cider. Oh. I don't this know if you've had before. Could be a test. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to try a bunch of different ciders and uh, talk about them. And also, I, I went and got some of the popular ones. Yeah. I like, uh, we got Angry Orchard. And what else? A shilling. We got shilling. And we got shilling. Ace. And Ace. Ace. So these are, these are some that you probably could get at your store. So uh, your local grocery store or whatever. So what we're going to do is, since we got a cider maker here that knows a lot about it, we can give you guys our thoughts on these as well as what to look for in good ciders and what hopefully to avoid maybe, right? Yeah, I mean, maybe we'll see. And it learns some terms about, um, you know, cider terms. What do you need to look for? You need to look for, what, what's the most important thing then we need to know about ciders? <laughs> the most important thing is, <laughs> tasting enough things that you develop your palate. Everybody likes different things. There you go, yeah. Um, if yeah, you, and if ours are very it, different. Yeah. He, he's more of a professional, I'm more of the... Uh, oh, the these, these people are all professionals. <laughs> <laughs> no, all, the, all these Michigan guys, they don't know anything about cider. <laughs> Come on. All right. Uh, I got some Borsine, my favorite yes. cheese. Is that all? Yeah, that'd be good. All right, so what we, we've we got here, we've got some crackers because crackers are a great, great way to clean the palate, right? So when you're drinking different ciders, uh, one might affect the next one, right? Yeah, Pretty definitely. Much? So having, if you're going to like really analyze multiple ciders at a time, um, which isn't necessarily the best way to do it. So a lot of times if you want to really do an in-depth review of a cider, you'll probably just try that one cider, like one cider a day. Which we are going to do now because uh, this is going to force us to start doing a real kind of review of... Yeah, or, more in-depth. Yeah, more in-depth um, analysis, so to speak, of various ciders as well as our own. And we'll talk about more of that and uh once again this is the herbs happy hour so thanks for coming and uh are you guys drinking any ciders out there i'm looking at the list let's see uh yeah put it on there on the feed if you guys are drinking any so also i've got some this is my favorite borsin borsin sounds fancier to say borsin but uh borsin my garlic and fine herbs. What is that? Guarnay? Yep. Gaurne? Gaurne. Gaurne? Gaurne cheese. This stuff's amazing. Smooth, simple. And when I have it with cider, it kind of helps uh, refresh. And plus, I'm a little hungry right now. So <laughs> I figure we could that helps. have this. So we got a little setup. Nothing fancy, but. There's some cheese, got a couple glasses, and uh, what are we gonna do first, Chris? So first thing, we're gonna start with probably the most readily available cider in the country. If not ours. 
angry orchard. <laughs> this is the um, crisp apple. Yeah. So I got the angry orchard crisp apple, which is at your store, most likely. Most likely. So and your supermarket, your gas station is just about everywhere. And we wanted to keep it simple. I didn't I didn't go grab like a fruity pineapple or the rose I saw they had a rose didn't want to do that we just wanted to go straight up apple and um, so yeah, and just so I guess talk about what we a couple of things when you're going to taste the cider you're gonna aim I find ideally for a temperature like everybody's gonna have a different preferred drinking temperature okay um, some people like it cold or some like it warmer. But when you're going to like really analyze a cider, the, a nice temperature range is that 48 to 55 degrees. You don't want it too cold. Um, if you're, if you're 48, so 48 to 55, like not too so cold. So that's not a, ref, a frid, refrigerator is 38, 39. Take it out of your fridge, let it sit on the counter for five minutes, then sample it. If okay, for like see there's some good tips. Analysis. If you're going for a really in-depth review, you would take it out of the fridge Try it then, and then you'll try it as it warms up through various degrees, stages. So you'll try it when it's cold, and then every five degrees, you taste it and see how it changes, how it opens up. Oh, wow. Okay, so here we've got the crisp apple. I'm trying to see if there's any information on ingredients. Um, hard cider. Hard, hard cider, comma water, cane sugar, apple juice from concentrate, malic acid, honey, natural flavor. Oh, there's honey in it, I didn't know that. Carbon dioxide and sulfites to preserve the freshness. So these are the ingredients listed on the bottles. So I would tell you. So one thing, you just go in for the smell. I, I'm doing the turning like it's wine, and I know. That, no, that works. Is that yeah. okay? Yep. Oh, okay. I know you don't like to agitate the cider. <laughs> no, ag agitating when you're doing an analysis is it's good. good. Gets the smell coming. So I am really so. This is the this is the difference. Like, I feel like I can't really smell anything different than maybe just the cider, but his nose might probably have a lot. So. What do you smell? So one thing, right off the bat, you can smell that this was made with apple concentrate. So apple concentrate has a very specific aroma. So that, okay, so that's what we get. That's a learning thing. Yeah, that's something, drinks, again, that you, drink stuff. It's not easy to teach you that because we don't use it. Because we, we can it. get some and we can yeah. like, have So that's the difference with our cider right there. We do not use it. Ours is just straight apple juice and then our juice is fermented exactly like wine. And this, is probably it's cheaper yeah so and it's easier to travel right it's cheaper um the main reason why the big guys would get apple concentrate dilute it with water back to basically the equivalent of single strength juice and then from that that is because it's substantially cheaper like that's how you can afford to sell okay uh, a 8.99 six pack right and our six packs are 11.99 12.99 depending so so then when you're that's tasting, an interesting what, little what difference, but the flavor is not bad. The flavor is not bad, but I mean, if I it had to drink it, an artificial apple flavor, which right. again, you can definitely pick out. Um, you, when, when you get accustomed to it, it's like almost like a green apple jolly rancher. Like you can find those notes in there, <laughs> right? And that's that's that artificial flavor. But again, it tastes like apples. This is. I think they're driest cider, which for us I would consider a semi-dry. Is this it's the driest? It's definitely not dry. Is this their driest? I believe so. Well, it's got 18 grams of sugar. Now that's coming from honey and the juice concentrate, I would assume. Oh, and the cane sugar. They're also would, adding cane sugar. I would almost consider that a semi-sweet. Right, this is more of a sweeter. For sure. So like with ours, there's no added sugars. If there is sugar, it's just left over from the fermentation process. Um, and this is added cane sugar as well. 
as the, the sugar that's in the apple juice concentrate, that stuff is not dry. There's no sugar taken out of that, right? That's just straight, how does it concentrate? So depends, you know? depends on who they're getting it from. Often it's a, a heating and centrifuge process. Okay. Where they, they basically, all you're it doing It turns is, it into like a syrup, right? Yeah, you're removing liquid and concentrating the sugars. Mm. So, it's drinkable. I mean, it's definitely drinkable. There's Not reason, too bad. There's a reason why it's the most popular silo in the country. Yeah, it's easy, drinkable, and uh, not terrible. Does have 22 grams of sh uh, carbs, 18 grams of sugar, and um, just in comparison, our something that's maybe a little sweeter on our side would have. So all black note. Three grams of sugar. So the sweetest cider we've done in a can had about five grams of sugar. Five grams. And, and that's our sweetest. Yeah. Yeah. So it was. And that was just straight from the apple juice itself. <clears throat> so that kind of shows you the difference. And for technically getting this stuff across the country, also this is part of the process too doing the concentrate um because shipping that kind of juice for the like they wouldn't order a fresh juice tanker yeah exactly unless it's close so when, when you're buying i heard some, they get apples from yakima they get here. apples from all or the over juice the, place. the juice all over and that's, yeah that's an issue when you're at that scale when yeah. you're producing tens of thousands of gallons of cider a day getting consistently fresh juice is impossible right and the concentrate would be good for storage too right yeah it's very stable very easy to transport so at that scale i don't know how else you would do it hmm. yeah they obviously have figured out so this is what most people think cider is because it says angry orchard hard cider i wonder how they get away with making a fruit side do they do a fruit side everything they do is under seven percent so they can do a fruit and not have to change their TTB name TTB doesn't go. so it's an interesting thing the ttb who monitors all the labeling and legalities of making an alcohol um if you do a f something that is not just apples it can't be called cider if there's fruit in it if it's over seven percent. Over seven. So the, the way it works is any cider under seven percent alcohol is governed by the FDA, and the FDA doesn't have regulations based on class. Like they don't care if it's cider or wine or beer. Okay, um, but TTB. TTB. Does. If it's over seven percent, it falls into the domain of the TTB. Okay. And technically, they just recently, like within the last decade, created a classification for cider. Right. Well, it can be made only from apples or peri, which is made only from pears. Right. Pears. If you put any other kind but of But don't we have to call it a peri if it's 100% pear? Yeah, it's not a cider. It has to be, or we have to have 51% apples, right? If there's, if there's any, any quantity of apples in it, it's a pear cider. So it has to be 100% pears to be called a peri. Okay. I see. So any apples in it changes yeah. back to a but cider. But then if you put okay. any food other than apples or pears, it's now a wine. <clears throat> so it's now just a fruit wine. Wow. Yeah, see, it's, it, it, it's confusing. And it, it goes to the labeling, the artwork on the label. Uh, sometimes you will see our artwork. We are adding ours because we have over 7%. We have ciders that are over 7%. Cider coming in fruit uh, flavors. And so you'll see a little INC, which means Herb Incorporated, which we have been the whole time. We didn't do anything. We just never put it on our logo. So now we did a little art that has that on there. So now you will be able to legally get the cider shipped, yeah. right? So in the bottles, we're doing all our fruit and bottles from now on, not in cans. Anything or, over 7% goes into a bottle. Sorry, we're not doing sugar in our cans anymore because of, to preserve that, we've run into some issues where the re stopping the refer 
re-fermentation, right? Yeah, it's something we uh, will be able to address in the future. Just Right, but right now, now we just decided we're going to do anything in a bottle. If we want sugar in it, it'll come in a bottle. It'll be a little sweeter. All our cans are going to be dry, and it's easier for our process right now to handle it that way. So, um, and this is 5%. The Angry Orchard is 5% alcohol. So, it's not bad. Did you, what did you, yeah. It's you liked it, right? What I expected. I haven't had it in a very long time. I know. I think I had this years and years ago. So, that I would say is a definitely a sweet cider. If you go to the store and you're looking at ciders, the crisp apple is sweet. So if you want, uh, do we have any other glasses maybe? Yeah, Kevin, do you have another glass? Oh, is Kevin here? Yeah. Just because I didn't finish this one, otherwise I'm going to have to swig everything. So what do we have next? Uh, is that helping people out there? Um, oh, someone just said, just found a cider company. Can I find it in PA? It is not there in any stores, but what you should do is go to HerbCider.com and order cider. We'll ship it right to you. You do not have to have your pants on. It goes right to your door. It's COVID. Come on. All right. All right. So the next Thank you, one Kev. we'll do will be Shillings London Dry. All right. So this is a dry... And they call it London Dry, which is interesting. I grabbed the Magners Irish. It says Irish cider. So maybe that's more of a traditional. That'd be cool so to compare. The London Dry, they obviously going for more of an English style, which are traditionally fairly dry cider. And again, this is only two grams of sugar. So this is much closer to what we would think of as a dry cider. Right, right. Um, I used to drink this one fairly often. So it's probably pretty so good. I, yeah, I haven't had it in a long time, but I did used to like it quite a bit. All right. Thank you. Crackers. So yeah, going that's in, very good. First on the aroma, it's you don't get that artificial nose that you got from the Indian orchard. It's a mm -hmm. little bit cleaner. It's a little bit more like a fresh apple juice. Right. <clears throat> so this one um, contains fresh pressed apple juice only. And that's why you get that sugar content is only two grams. Is because that's just the sugar that's in the apples, the fructose, if that makes any sense. It's not, uh, it's a natural sweetener that when you bite an apple, it's in there. So... Zero added sugars. Yeah, very good. Um, so, yeah, that's a dry. That's why. That's it's, what they call dry, meaning no sh low sugar, right? Yeah, low sugar. Because in wine, dry might be more tannic, right? Yeah, like well, something so that's kind of still... chalky on your teeth. Yeah. So there's a astringency and tannins have a drying effect on your palate, which can also give you the impression that something is dry when it does in fact still have sugar in it. Um, this one does have a slight astringency. It this does. actually quite good. It does, I yeah. I still enjoy it. All right, so that's the... And it's definitely nice and dry. It's not bone dry, but it's right. definitely a dry cider. Yeah, you can keep drinking this for sure. I am getting that ast that uh, astringent. What? Astringency? Mm -hmm. Astringency. I am getting that... Um, the London Dry, it's very good. 6.5%. I feel like the Angry Orchard, I'd probably, after one, might have a hard time doing another one. Just because yeah. I know it's going to start you know feeling, it's going to be overwhelming. Uh, but this, because it is drier, that's what happens. You can definitely uh, keep adding to your glass and keep drinking. It's a very, very good drink. Yeah, I like that. Now, Angry Orchard also does, 
we we will try some of their uh, what do you want to call it heritage bottle stuff. They do Angry Orchard. Aside from the standard six packs you'll see in the stores, they actually do have a high end line where they do champagne styles or bottle condition heritage style styles. Um, they're not as easy to find if you happen to live near the main or like the original production facility. You can go in there and get them. You can find them online. Okay. If, you, if you're really lucky, maybe occasionally your grocery store will have a bottle or two. Right. They definitely have a, a really high-end bottle. But we grabbed this just um, just because that's probably a really general grab in a grocery store. Most grocery stores probably carry it. And um, the shilling also, we think, is there, this the one I grabbed, right? Yeah. The so there were, yeah. there were Washington side of me. I, oh. I'm not sure how far oh, I thought they were. off the West Coast you will find them. All right. Well, if you see these guys... But again, you can't find it's it very online. good. Yeah, and you can probably get it online. No, no worries. Or you could just say, well, why not just go to HerbCider.com and get a nice dry anyways. It'll take its place. You can do it that way, too, if you'd like. All right. Like um, yeah, that's a good one. Does dry wine have less sugar? Yeah. Any question, you guys? Yes, uh, it does. Put them up. Dry wine have less sugar. Yes. So, it does. So dry, so typically dry, um, so, something will have, can have a drying effect. Like again, if something is high astringency, it can have an, a, drying, a drying effect on your mouth. But in terms of an actual classification, if something is dry or semi-dry, the drier something is, the, the less sugar is in it. So, so can you balance it though? If you had more sugar and more astringent cider, like if it's... It could taste dry, but it wouldn't be classified as a dry cider. It wouldn't be classified. Yeah. Just because of the, the label, or they would say, oh, just, this is not Just a because, dry. so the dryness scale is typically what people would use to represent how much sugar is in something. Okay. Again, this isn't actually governed by any regulatory body. Right. So somebody could put dry on something that's got a ton of grams of sugar on it because it's not governed, it's just kind of accepted. Mm -hmm. in the community or in the industry that okay. we wouldn't call something really sweet or dry. Okay. Yeah. Just before I got into cider, I always thought dry meant getting that chalky feeling, you know, in your mouth mm. that you would get from a wine that's, you know, that real, yeah, the tannins. So, and that's where I found out eating proteins with it is really good to help that. Yeah, and it so, that also comes to palate cleansers when you're doing a tasting like this on Fortin. Two of the best ones that I found um, that you, you won't do as often because they don't transport as easily is actually bananas, a really good palate cleanser. But then my number one all time favorite and I think the best palate cleanser is small strips of just uncooked raw beef. Uncooked? Yeah, completely raw, tiny wow. strips. It just really is perfect for cleaning your palate. It's got all the fats and proteins in there. It's just like really wow. good from going one to Really? Another. And you'll, you'll never see that at like a wine tasting or anything because obviously to have the comment, why don't you do that? Oh, oh right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you're doing it at home. Unless you're in, in uh, Wuhan, China, <laughs> get that fresh meat. Um, okay. Right, so take a palate cleanser. I'm gonna try palate cleanser, else. yeah, I just did a little. Let me finish this one. Which one is that? So this is the Ace in Joko Dry. Now Ace is in California. Actually in Sebastopol, mm -hmm. which is where we do, we have a, Les, our Primus bass player, has his winery there as well. You know, Ace has been there a long time. I saw an article they're, they're relatively large. They've been around for a while. That's enough, yeah. Um, again, this one is pretty low sugar, 6.9% alcohol, no added sugar. Um, the only ingredients are, where did that go? Uh, apple juice, sulfites to preserve, right. and uh, malic acid. Well, they add some malic acid. All and right. That's calming. So, and there's also nothing wrong with that. Right. 
So it just if the apple if the apple was lacking. So malic acid is the primary acid that occurs in apples. It's dominant and or present in most fruits. And throwing a little bit in if you had a harvest where your apples weren't very acidic because they change year to year, and you're expected uh, your customers are expecting consistency, so you may need to add a little bit of malic acid to keep it the same. All right. So it's basically what gives apple its flavor. Yeah, <clears throat> malic makes acid an apple is taste that, like an apple is malic acid. Green apple flavor. Oh, yeah. So not a bad thing. That's good. This is that's yeah. really good. This is I like that on the dry side. Higher tanning. Gosh, man, I could drink that. That's really good. And that it does only have three grams carbs, three grams sugar. So all the carbs come from sugars. 160 calories. This is this is very close to our double store dry. Yeah. I was gonna say that's very good. Um, yeah, Ace Cider, they're down in California. I know we got some people in California hanging out with us. So, Ace's Dry Apple Craft Cider. 6.9%, just under 7. So, that's it right there. Now, that's a good one. Definitely, I could definitely drink that some more. Anybody got any questions so far? I could let me look a little bit back. Um, Bogota is in the house. Okay, nice. Bogota, Colombia. We had a great time down there. It must have been two years ago now. Shoot. Uh, what is Chris's favorite herb cider? My favorite cider right now is uh, Grand Cuvée Concerto Number no. One which is a blend of 15 heritage cider apples that we aged, aged in cognac barrels for 10 months. Aged in, for 10 months in and that our one, So that barrels. one did okay. just win a platinum, oh, yeah. meadow, sip northwest, and double gold in cider craft international competitions. And there's another winner too, what was that? That was the concerto number two, which was a similar uh, kind of idea. It was 17 cider apples that we co-fermented with wild plums that we picked all around the county. And then that was also aged in cognac barrels for 10 months. There you go, guys. Award-winning <laughs> cider. In case you can't tell, I'm a big cognac fan. Yeah. Okay. So how, what, uh, how do these guys get any of that? So all of that stuff can be found on our website. Mm -hmm. I think actually we... We, did, had, we did actually sell out of that. We have more. We just don't have labels yet. So we're having labels printed. Um, oh, we're about we should, to label more. Yeah, we should. it should be available really soon. Really soon, like within days most likely, right? Well, depending on how quickly things ship to us. The label guys? Yeah. Up here? And well, then also, I guess, bottles. We, we need to, bottles, We order more bottles. Oh, but man. we order those today, so hopefully soon. All right. Well, there you go. You got some award winners coming to you. Um, oh, my God. It's cold in here. I can see my breath. Jeez. Oh, there's no heat in the I weather. am getting cold. Keeps the bill nice and cold. Uh, ciders in Van uh, Victoria, B.C. Unfortunately, we haven't arranged international shipping. And um, you are just across the border. And dang it. Um... Once they open the border, maybe you can come down. Uh, Shamo says, Concerto number one is our Grand Cuvée, available on HerbCider.com. And the link is in the bio. So, that's some good info for you to go online. You can get that. Do, we, do you have a bottle of that that's got the label on it and everything that we can show? That's a good question. I think we had somebody walk in and buy the last bottle. All right. So someone came in. Yeah, someone came in and uh, might have bought, bought it. Them all. Oh, someone bought them all. We are out of it right now. So yeah, um, can you ship across the pond? No, we can't go across into Canada yet. Uh, anybody on here, if you got some questions. Um, go to bed. Why? Do I look tired? 
Jeez. All right. Yeah, Canada coming soon. We're 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 gonna this year is gonna be the year. We're gonna work out all this international stuff. So um, now we've got. What about those ciders you got? Those are the. Oh, one, let's do the Irish one. One more I want to try. First. Okay, we're gonna do the Irish cider next. Here's our some of our barrels in the background. You can see. Whiskey barrels, bourbon barrels. Uh, oh, we got tequila barrels too. Yep. What have you? Okay, so what did you make with the tequila barrels? So earlier this year, we did a kind of a collaborative effort with a local cider house called Thousand Acre Cider House, and they helped us kind of come up with the idea. We did a pineapple. We called it a pineapple margarita. It was a cider that we fermented with pineapple and blue agave and we aged it in tequila bells. That thing turned out amazing. And we're, aren't we going to do that regularly? And we'll be doing, so that will be probably, we're going to aim to do that as like a summer release. So every summer we'll probably do a batch of it. Or are we, not going, to, are we like not going to have that like permanent? Depending on how many tequila bells we can get. We need more tequila? We got to talk to The Rock. Yes. <laughs> Anybody know The Rock? See if we can get some of his leftover tequila barrels for his, uh, ter what is it, Terramana? Is it, I think it's called Terramana. Anyways, um, that was also a really great side of the pineapple, so don't miss that, I'm telling you. Um, we got something here. Will the single stroke be available so single stock, we're moving into bottles. We're gonna kind of transition it back into, so when we originally launched that, it was in a 500 ml bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was our very first bottle. Yeah, so we're gonna- As herb cider. Move that back, kind of back to its original format. Yeah, and um, it still is one of my favorites when you went back to that yeast. Yeah. Man, it's so good. So yes, it's gonna come, uh, Tequila Barrel. Someone asked if you could do a facility tour. Well, we can do it right now. I mean, do you wanna grab your bottles that you grabbed? Yeah, well, let's finish up. Well, wait, this let's do this one then. Yeah, we'll walk around and do a quick tour with you. No problem. So, Magnus, Irish Cider. Again, you can find this most places. I've not had this in a very long time. This is... Um, My computer battery died, but we could pull up. Do you know anything about them? We could um, pull up their information. They've been around for a very long time. Let's see if this even says something else. 1935. Mm. Um, uh, as I recall, this is not a dry cider. No? It is an all apple cider. But again, Irish style ciders tend not to be bone dry. Um, this is... Apple juice, sulfites, lightly carbonated, and so this actually has, um, this is something we haven't touched on yet, is in the early days, people added a lot of caramel color to your cider, because if you're using dessert apples, it tends to be really pale. And traditionally, apples should be a rich amber color Oh, so they so they this has more of a rosé type look. This has coloring in it. But nowadays we're used to seeing nowadays you don't clear you don't see that very often clear ciders, right? But that's actually relatively new. So for a long time, people would use coloring in those. So cider. this is the old. So does this have caramel? What is it? It just doesn't specify. I would guess caramel color was the most commonly used one. Yeah. So this is the color he's talking about. And uh, again, not bad. That's no, not. It's sweet not at as, all. It's not as sweet as the Angiotto. It does have twelve grams of sugar. Ah, see, that's where it got you. It, it got me. It's made from seventeen. The astringency of, of it. Apple. So yeah. it does have that astringency, which hides some of that sweetness. It does hide it because I didn't think it was that sweet at all. But yeah, 
You definitely have to get on the treadmill after this. After having those two, <laughs> it's about 40 calories worth of sugar. Right? 40 uh, grams of sugar right there. But it is drinkable, but I have, because I've done it before, when I was first getting introduced to cider, <clears throat> that hidden sweetness mm -hmm. catches up to you. It can get, yeah. After you do one glass and you try to do more, man, it just gets, it gets rough. It just, you start not wanting it, I don't, I, or at least for me. After I've had it, I just, I didn't want any more. And that's where I started learning about dry versus, <clears throat> Or the dry meaning low sugar versus, you know, a higher sugar that doesn't taste that sweet because it's so tart or astringent. And that's where it can get tough. But this one is good, definitely. But yeah, I can taste the sugars. I get that feeling like after this, I probably don't want any more of it, you know? Um... And it's not that sweet, that's for sure. Uh, we got North Carolina in the house too. Shama wants some music. What should I play or ask the viewers maybe? What do you mean, music? Yes. <laughs> music here in the background? In the background, yes, she was saying. Oh, I know, wouldn't that be nice? We should play some music. Oh, <laughs> what should I play? I don't know. <laughs> what do you... <laughs> we, we don't even have it set up right now. So, uh, should we do a little tour? Yeah. You feel like it? Let's do it. All right. All right, guys. So, here we are. Um, this is our tasting room. We are building out. I'm going to go all the way down so they can get a shot from the back. Soon to so, be tasting room. Yeah, soon to be tasting room. I'm going to the entrance so you can see how big it is. But that's our spot. We had a spot downtown Bellingham. She's saying put on Bob Marley. Yeah. You got your phone? Yeah, yeah, I can play it off the phone. Yeah, what the hell? Okay. Probably not a bad idea. Um, let's see, that's a pretty good idea. Napoleon Dynamite would say that, I think. Anyways, this is our tasting room. Um, as we move closer, we come down here. You can see the setup where we're filming. And uh, some boring offices here in the back. What are these? What do we got here? These are some bottles sitting around waiting for labels. This is uh, Blue Note. Which oh, is yeah. Heirloom Blueberry. Made and the from, blueberries are from Bow Hill, right? Yeah, so they're made from locally grown organic heirloom blueberries. So heirloom blueberries are, again, similar to cider apples. They're not something you're ever going to find in the store unless you, I guess... So them, what makes them down. heirloom? So they are old style blueberries. They're so usually like teeny tiny. Um, the flavors are a lot deeper. They're not just like big sugar bombs like a lot of grocery store blueberries. And to use the term heirloom, what's that mean? So heirloom... Um, is that I, the age thing? Yeah, so basically it's a variety of apple or the blueberries. blueberry or fruit that mm -hmm. is at least a hundred years old and isn't like um, crossbred or really refined into... So like this, a, a this, ma it's, it's not a major commercial So the, the strain of it yeah. is at and least a hundred years old. That variety is at least a hundred years old. Alright, well there you go. We've got some heirloom blueberries in this. This is our... Is this the, uh, what is this? So that is a, uh, a rosé style. So that's a still oh, cider. I was thinking sparkling. Nice. It's made from Redfield Bitter Sharp Apples. Redfield Bitter, Redfield Bitter Sharp Apples in this. And is that going to be available soon for people or is... So those, that's the last Trav bottles in existence. We had it only uh, um, in the year. Uh, um, we had 12 bottles in a case that we didn't label. So what are we going to do with this? We'll probably label them and sell them here when we open the case room. Oh, okay. Probably only available here. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, this is making you thirsty, I'm sure. 
Um, oh, Miles Davis would have loved the Blue Note. Well, that's where that name came from. Shaman's a big fan of the Miles Davis music, for sure. All right, sorry. So, here we are doing our tour. There's a bunch of old cans with uh, we're waiting to get into. Some barrels, this is our taps, where we'll have stuff available probably you can only get here so some of you guys are going to have to fly out and visit us um and now we're going to creep down into the production zone so what do you want to here let's give a different view of the barrels so right there here's some of these just real quick these are really cool these these are the came with the cognac shipment, Yep. right? And how many gallons are these? 500 liters. Oh, those are 132 gallons. 132 gallons here. And a regular barrel is usually about 55, right? 52. 52. 52 if it's a whiskey barrel, 60-ish if it's a wine barrel. Okay, so you can see the difference in the size there. So these are pretty big guys. And these are really cool. These came, these are cognac barrels. Do we have... What, do we have stuff in here right now? Yeah, that's still got the Pomo in it. This has the Pomo in it right now. So, got to get into that. Um, yeah. So, here's some barrels for you. If you come around this way, you'll see we have all, a bunch of kegs here. We still have the majority of them out in the world. Um... Someone's saying they saved the blue note for nine months while she was pregnant. Oh, cool. All right. Well, now that's a nice aged. It is. is it going to age good? It has been aging fantastically. Okay, I've cool. I've been very happy with how it's aging. All right. And uh, now we're entering in the production zone. We follow Chris. And here we have, we just sent out a big order today, right? Yep. And we have some leftover black notes. In the cans, we've got some rim shots. Now these are the hazy hop. These have a little bit of hop in them, uh, just to, for a little of the beer flavor. And this is the double stroke. And this is the dry. This is a really, really, really good one, it's selling well. Yeah, right. That is our best selling product. And uh, we come in here, this is the canning line here. This is where our empty cans come up, go down this rack, and then we go over here and they get filled right here. This comes down and fills them. Caps come down here and go on the caps, or go on the cans and they go through and then this shoves them in puts the seam around the, the top that makes it nice and sealed up. And uh, here we throw a label on it, comes out into the packaging zone and then we get it ready and go to you. That's right. So that's the canning line. Um, let's see, I can't believe. Okay, oh, well, there's conversations going on, sorry. Um, all right, let's get back to here. All right, so these are the, you wanna show them the, here they are guys, these are amazing. Look at these things. So these are giant, so these These have, are the cognac barrels. This is what those two award winning ciders we were talking about earlier were made in. This is those gigantic 520 gallon um, photos of barrels. They had cognac in them for 40 years. They were emptied and shipped directly to us from France. And then we put cider in them. Yep. And then let's look at the, uh, do you have that sheet? I saw a sheet that had the list of apples. It uh, was like, how many that. apples do you have in there? So that was, so they had that 15 was on apples. That one. They had 15 in this one. 17. And 17 in this one? Yeah. All right, well, there you go. That's how that's made. But these bar those barrels are amazing. 40 years of cognac sitting in them and then we got them. And then here we have our tanks. These are f fermentation tanks, like wine tanks. 
very tall if you look up there very big um and then down the line they both these both hold the same amount right these are approximately these ones are just a hill larger but they oh they're larger about but two thousand gallons yeah Probably about two thousand gallons but look at the height difference <laughs> it's pretty cool and then over here this is a super powerful filter to filter out all the sludge and everything that goes that it comes out of an apple when you make it into a juice right yeah i think we only filter the side that we put in the cans only so everything okay. that we put into a bottle tends to be silos that have aged for a lot longer um cider would naturally clear up as it ages like all that stuff will eventually set up out okay and, but you're not doing that in the bottles though the settling um, some of it, some, some of, of it, we have real bottle. So if you bottle, we'll bottle some on, cloudy, cloudy yeah, ciders, right? In the bottom of the bottle, and that's totally okay. Fine. Yeah, that'll make it taste good. Here's some little ones we call the R two D twos. Uh, do you got anything going in these right now? Yeah, we anything have. So we have two barrels of uh, of our bourbon barrel cider that we emptied in here. Oh, really? We needed the barrels for something. Uh -huh. So this is sitting there. Bourbon barrel, that's a great one. We have some the seven back. four. Yeah. So are we gonna make more of that? Yep. Yeah, I mean this is gonna get blended into a larger batch when we empty some of the barrels. Oh okay. Oh my god, that's the best. I love it. And then this is a Kingston. Look at that, Black. Kingston Black, you guys, from Bellwood Acres. Kingston Blacks are pretty good apples. Cider specific, you won't find them in the grocery store. And uh, yeah, a couple other tanks. So let's see, I can see the outside. Nothing in these right now? Um, this has the next batch of hopped. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, it's just not in the thing, okay. Yeah. So the rim shot's coming out soon, another batch. And uh, that's, the, that's the building there with our tanks. And uh, anything else we can show them? Oh, well, here's, this is the carbonation tank right here. So that's called the bright tank. Yeah, so to right? use that, um, any side of it, you don't do a bottle conditioning, you put it in here and inject it with CO2. And that's how you get the carbonation in the bubbles. Same as beer, right? Yeah, same as beer. Yeah. So Chris did some uh, beer, t beer time over with, who was it? Port Townsend? Port Townsend Brewing. Right. That's where we uh, first connected, and I stole them <laughs> from there. But, uh, yeah, so same process, the carbonation with beer, and then the same process with winemaking. So kind of, a, kind of a blend between the two. All right, so we got almost 10 minutes left. Uh, what is she talking about here? What can we use for another 40 years here? Uh, how many times can you reuse those? So you, oh, the which one? The cognac barrels? Probably yeah. is what they're thinking. So how long can, can we reuse those? If you are good at barrel maintenance and you really keep on it, you can use them for almost indefinitely. Really? And will we still get the flavor? No. So the cognac, the majority of that cognac flavor, we will have soaked out in that post batch of cider. Okay. Um, following the second batch, we'll get. It will still get some, but it won't be as dominant as it was in the first batch. By the third batch, you'll start, you know, like you get faint notes of it, and then usually by the fourth batch, they're relatively neutral at that point. So hmm. ideally, what you do at that point is you would empty those, send them back to a distillery. They would use them again for cognac or brandy, and then you would replace it with a fresh one if you're still looking for that flavor. Oh really? Hmm. The other option, which is a fun thing to do, is you can keep you can keep using it. You keep getting oak, like you can keep using it to extract oak flavor. That's what I was going to ask. Are we going to get this? Keep to help mellow ciders. Something else that's fun to do, which we've only done in barrels, but if you want to do a larger batch, is you inoculate it with like a, a lambic strain, which has all sorts of bacteria like Bacillus and Pseudococcus, and you make these sour like farmhouse style. Uh, hmm. Inside us, because that bacteria okay. will then seep into that wood. So once you inoculate it once, you just keep dumping juice in there and it just keep turning to the sour, farmhousey deliciousness. Wow. Well, there you go. That's how we can make some cider. 
sour cider. Um, we just showed you the canning line. We just went through the canning line. I just did that whole thing. You guys will have to rewatch this later and uh, you can see how that works. But yeah, with, so those that's what I was gonna ask. Those barrels, we can still continue to get some wood flavor. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get cognac flavor out of the next batch. Um, we'll have to age it a little bit longer. And what about what about these? How 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 many times can we get, say, a good uh, bourbon barrel or? A... It depends a lot on how long the bourbon was in there and how like intense of a bourbon it was. Okay. So these ones. It had Woodenville whiskey, and I actually supposed to tell you who it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it had um, that was, most of those are all in the second round. We still have four of them that are now over two years old. So we've got side okay. of them for over two years. Oh wow! Um, but, two years now? Yeah. So usually two. two we got to charge way two, more money. Batches. <laughs> That's a lot of rent space taken up. Don't you think? Um, all right, so we got uh, about cider. nine minutes. Yeah, what do you got? So this is Samuel Smith. Again, you can find this, um, I want to say everywhere. It's not Ascom, but you can find it all across the country. It's imported from the UK. Yeah. Or the organic. I, that's one of the first ones I think I ever did. So something. Was it Jake? What is it? What are they Sam, called? Samuel Smith. Samuel Smith. You're thinking of the J.K. Scrumpy. J.K. Scrumpy is the I've other one I first too. got onto, yeah. So something um, that is interesting about organic ciders imported versus domestic is that domestic organic ciders can't use sulfites. Imported ones can because across the pond, um, typically it means it's all organic ingredients, but you're still allowed to use sulfites to preserve it. Mm -hmm. um, that you're not allowed to do that in America. You can't put sulfites in an organic cider. Oh, organic, sorry. I, I got. So it would be labeled organic, cannot contain a preservative. I have not had this cider in a very long time either. Wow, okay. I got a soapy smell. Does that make sense? I don't know. Hmm. That's pretty good. It's not bad. Product of the UK, United Kingdom, gluten free. The aroma is not particularly apple forward. But just so everyone knows. It, tastes like, it smells like it's been in that container for a while. Right. Which so, um, a general. It's pretty safe to say it has since it came all the way. Yeah, it's the probably UK. been in here for a while. A general statement would be that cider is gluten-free unless there's wheat, which I don't think there would be wheat in You're it, You're not right? allowed to. It's against, the TTB would not let you put wheat or grain of any kind. Right, of right. So that's where gluten comes from. So ciders in general, gluten-free. So that's why people with, uh, what's the disease? Celiac. Celiac. Celiac disease can drink cider. Um, so yeah. 11 grams of sugar in this one does not taste that sweet so it must be oh my god uh water organic apple juice cane sugar malic acid yeast and carbon dioxide so that's what they <clears throat> bubble it in the bright tank um so there you go it's similar to the angry orchard angry orchard uh ingredients so the process probably similar mm -hmm. And uh, I, BPA free cans. Is that how most of our cans now in the yeah, US so are? Legally, um, as of last year, um, can manufacturers in the US can no longer manufacture cans with BPA in the lineup. So, so I wonder what can they're using. Is BPA free? Well, the lining, uh, cider was an issue with the liners inside of this stuff, right? Yeah. So. So how are they getting away with this, especially from the UK? Like it's coming all the way from They're there. They're using, my guess would be Velcro to stabilize. Oh, right. So they're 
Okay. They're using a they're using a chemical to stabilize the yeast to keep the yeast yeah, from, from refermenting, refermenting heat pasteurizing or heat pasteurizing, and it is a BPA free can. So yeah, well maybe we should look into that or can the issue with heat pasteurizing to keep up with our camera line is the amount of electricity needed. Mm. See, you guys got to buy more cider. <laughs> So we can. A building doesn't actually have enough electricity to. Oh, we don't have enough. Pasteurizer. Well, there you go. You got to buy more cider so we can. Build a new building. Build a new building to get more power so we can pasteurize these cans properly and get you get you real proper cider. You know. Um, all right, four minutes. I guess that's cool. We got. Yeah. You guys can come to. Uh, do we have some of our cans? Around somewhere, anybody? Yeah. Grab one out of the fridge there. One of our cans there, yeah. That's great. Yeah. So, you guys go to. Ba -ba, go to herbsider.com. We've got cans. They have not been pasteurized, so these have uh, no sugar. Well, this one. This one Black Note has a little bit of sugar. Black Note has a little, but we're going to a dry, right? We are changing it to a dry. This will turn into a dry soon, and then we will have a sugary, uh, sugary Marionberry in a bottle coming soon. And Sean was asking, is the bourbon barrel going into cans soon? The bourbon barrel aged is going into cans, so that will be available in as soon as we get, cans. As soon as we get the art, right? Yep, as soon as we get the art work done for the label. All right, so that's coming soon. That's one of my favorites. I know I've told you guys before. That's the seven four. Can they? We're able to ship the bottle, right? I believe we're able to ship the bottle. Yeah. Okay. Well, get the bottles right now. The bourbon barrel. It's called the seven four. Um, three minutes left. So if you guys have any questions, and uh, sorry, I'm looking at the thing. Shipping nationwide. Yes. Shipping nationwide, whether they like it or not, we're going to send it out. So go on our website. It goes through a uh, Vino Shipper, a third party processor, so you don't have to worry about me. I'm not writing down your credit card number or anything like that. Come straight to your house, and uh, yeah, you will enjoy it. And this is our black note. We also have. Four other cans I think you can get and a bunch of bottles. So come to herbsider.com. All right, I think we might be done. Um, thanks, Chris, for yeah, getting chills. some stuff. Yeah, man. All right, you guys. Hope that helps. Maybe when you go to the store, you can look at ciders now and have an idea, you know, about the, the sugary ones, the non-sugary ones. And... Uh, Hopefully, maybe you'll see us in the store soon, in your store. Someone, uh, Shama, saying pants. What does that mean? And we have merch online, too. We're trying to sell. I don't think we have pants, but um, there you go. <laughs> All right. I guess I should end it now. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you. There's Chris. See ya. All right. Cheers. Uh, look for us next week. We'll probably do another one next week. All right, man. See ya. Bye.